Hey guys, my name is Iman and this is the third tutorial on time series analysis and forecast. In the previous tutorial, I explained how to remove seasonality and trend. After removing those components, we end up with a random fluctuation and hopefully this random fluctuation is a stationary signal and we can assign this fluctuation to an ARMA model. ARMA, AR stands for autoregressive and MA stands for moving average. So as you can see, the output depends on the previous inputs and the previous outputs. The largest lag here tells us the order of AR part. For example, if the largest lag or the largest delay is P, the order of autoregressive is P. And if the largest lag here is Q, the order of moving average is Q. For example, here the order of autoregressive part is 2 because the largest lag here is 2 and the order of moving average is 1 because the largest lag or delay is 1 another example the order of autoregressive is 3 because the largest lag is 3 and the order of moving average part is 0 so uh, now the question is how do we know if there is a seasonality in signal if we have trend if the model is autoregressive or moving average or ARMA. So in order to do that, we can use some tools. Uh, the first thing that we can use is Fourier transform. When you apply Fourier transform to your signal, and if you look at your signal in the frequency domain, if there is a spike, that spike is corresponding to a harmonic. And you can uh, analyze if there is seasonality or not. The second tool that you can use is autocorrelation or partial autocorrelation. Autocorrelation uh, intuitively means if the samples are correlated to each other or not. Partial autocorrelation is kind of the same thing, but we remove linear dependence on the previous samples before finding the autocorrelation. So I'm not going to explain the technical details. If you are interested uh, to understand more, please read the textbook. But you know, you can use autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation to judge if the system or if the signal is are, uh, autoregressive or moving average or combination of both. As a rule of thumb, if you are working with an autoregressive model with the order of P, autocorrelation tails off gradually and partial autocorrelation cuts off after P lags. For example, here you can see AR with the order of 1. And this graph, in this graph, you can see autocorrelation, and in this graph, you can see partial autocorrelation. As you can see, autocorrelation tails off gradually, and partial autocorrelation cuts off exactly after one lag, because the order is 1. For MA, for moving average, it's the other way. Uh, if the order is Q, autocorrelation cuts off after Q lags, but partial autocorrelation tails off gradually. Here's an example. MA with the order of 1. As you can see, autocorrelation cuts off exactly after one lag, and partial autocorrelation uh, tails off gradually. And finally, if your model is ARMA, you have you can see like uh, autocorrelation tails off gradually, and partial autocorrelation tails off gradually. Here is an example: ARMA one and one. Autocorrelation tails off gradually, and partial autocorrelation tails off gradually. Oh, I forgot to mention that whatever is inside these two bands is not uh, statistically significant and we can ignore it. Okay, so you can use autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation to judge if the model is AR or MA or combination of both. So in summary, in order to remove trend, you need to multiply your signal with this filter. If you want to remove seasonality, you need to multiply your signal with this filter. If you want to judge if the model is AR or MA or ARMA, you need to look at autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation. And, you know, sometimes the system is complicated and you need to try different models and choose one of them. Uh, there is a criteria in the literature, it's called Bayesian information criteria. Uh, so if you're not sure about uh, what type of model you are working with, you can try to build different models and then you can choose the one with the smallest Bayesian information criteria. As you can see, the whole thing is kind of like systematic. So that's why I develop 
this MATLAB GUI called TSAF stands for Time Series Analysis and Forecast. And you can use this GUI to uh, basically do these things very simply. In next tutorial, I'm going to explain how to work with TSAF. Thanks for watching this tutorial.